to show you the first motion picture ever made by a business company way back in 1911 a long time ago the picture was a classic of the early days the actors were stars their acting was rated perfect in the words of today the picture was magnificent colossal terrific in short it was the berries we want you to compare the photography the actors, their clothes, and the farm methods shown in the picture with those of today. And if you don't mind, I'm going to talk a little about it. A story of George, once a farm boy, now a mogul in his skyscraper office, and George is running a temperature. In comes his boyhood pal, a dressy pup with a flair for friendship. Hi, George, old boy, old boy, don't care if I do. What, vacation? Throw away them North Pole vacation folders and get a load of this. My dear Frank, I'm glad to know you are coming to spend your vacation with us on the old farm. Bring George with you if he can get away. He was always like an own son of mine, and I am not the only one who will be glad to see him. He'll know your Uncle Jim. Good old Uncle Jim. What do you say, George? I'll go, says George, I'll go. And he chucks the real estate business in the roll-top desk and leaves 699th Street to stew in her own juice. Goodbye, Dottie. Pay the rent. I'll be back August 24th. Old Fancy Pants knows his stuff. For those who came in late, this is the second or dream phase of the story. Intimate view, denim pajamas. One, two, and so to bed. A farm boy who made good in the city in his luxurious apartment over the brewery stable. Don't roll out of the picture, you mutt. Dreamland, percher and fillies and the one row cultivator. George may not like it, but he's used to it. Hot sun, not airplanes. Good actors, which the horses are George. And he rides like his great-grandsire who led the caravan across the prairies. No, not Indians, just wigwagging Uncle Jim. Now let's see if we can figure this out. Why is he hanging the horses on the fence? And over at the house, the women bustled. Dinner? That's easy to understand. And George must be tying a few extra bundles while the meat cooks. Come on to dinner, Uncle Jim, you old slave driver. Cooking? Washing, cannon, and getting dinner. That's not household confusion, that's organization. Don't forget this is a dream. If that mare steps on Jim's foot, he'll wake up. What's he shelling corn for anyway? Drat the flies. Those dresses must be cool around the... Uh, hey, hey, that must be hay for Maud and Bird, and he's dragging it in from somewhere. And on top of everything, Andy's churning. Take it easy, Andy. And Uncle Jim's wasting no time. Yar, says Uncle Jim, this yar size needs grinding. Come on, it'll give you an appetite. Who's discontented? Ah, there's a fine piece of mechanism for keeping the boys on the farm. Come on, yells Andy, while things is hot. High noon. One of the blessings of a good American farm. Meat, potatoes, gravy, and they could have fried chicken three times a day. And that's not a striker's mob scene. Those are law-abiding citizens getting ready to eat. But George is despondent, depressed, unhappy. His bosom is laden with grief. What, no eat? Something's eaten at George. Friends, we're coming to a crisis in this story, and don't you forget it. Phase number three, the turning point. Zero hour, still a watches of the night. And that's not a dungeon in a castle on the banks of the Wabash. That's an attic room up next to the tar paper roof where it's hot. And sleeping up there in August has cooled George's love for the farm. Give him time, he'll find the switch. And even in this bright, mellow light, George is enveloped in gloom. A struggle. 
Just dragging those boots around ten hours would tear a man down. Decision. It's settled. Or is it? He hears a call from afar, or is that the neighbor's dog arguing? That's right, George. Make up your mind. Shake the moth balls out of your Sunday suit, and we'll excuse you while you dress. Woman's intuition. She knows George is up to something. The plot thickens. It always does. And George ain't afraid to put it in writing. When Uncle Jim reads this, Dear Mr. Martin, you have been more than a father to me, and I am sorry I must leave. I cannot stand the drudgery of farm life when I think there is something better for me in the city. Goodbye, George Randall. Good letter, George. You're a diplomat. You didn't tell him to go chase himself. And goodbye, overalls. And the young giant grabs his suitcase and is off and away. And here comes George, determination in every fiber. There comes a tide in the affairs of men which, taken at the flood, leads on to fortune. George is burning his breeches behind him. George? What, George? Don't go, George. And George almost weakens. Steady, my boy. Courage. Go on and clinch her, you mutt. Don't keep us waiting. He wouldn't do so bad with a little practice. Onward, I'll conquer. And is she crushed or is she crushed? And he kind of likes to see her suffer. That's the brute in him. The old farm can go to grass, and that goes for the cultivator, too. That, my friends, is the end of the dream. And here's the boy with the striped suspenders right back in George's room. Wake up, George. Snap out of it. We're off to the farm, and Aunt Susan's cooking. But George is up with a brown taste in his mouth and fur on his tongue. Nothing doing, says George. I dreamed of the old farm. A hundred and twenty in the shade. Eighteen hours a day. Overtime seven nights a week. You're overlooking something, George. Pulchritude, if you know what we mean. Is that Molly? Oh, boy. Ask me, am I going? Ask me, am I going? And with joy in his heart and a tune in his neck. Phase number 3A, back to the boyhood scene. And they arrive at 6 p.m. on the 5.15. And transportation. Rubber tires. Well, what became of old Prince in the buckboard? And away they go, and here they come. Look at that residence, Buckingham Palace. Did they strike oil, or did old Kirkpatrick finally die? Why, Aunt Susie. Greetings, thrice greetings, and welcome. Looks like receiving a foreign delegation. And here's your room, boys. Where'd they get the money for all this? That's what we'd like to know. And look at what we got, electric lights. And you ain't seen nothing yet. Bathroom, Saturday night, inside plumbing. Why, Aunt Susie Uzi. Sarah Bell, towels and soap. And there's something on George's mind. What do you think? Such femininity. Now, don't underrate, George. Just wait and see. Watch your step. Ah, there's a picture suitable for framing. And such physical prowess. Guess who? George Molly. And she's blushing to the roots of her nose. And can't they act the curls off of Hollywood? Oh, this'll get us down. Let's go away and leave them to themselves. Let's see, what phase is this? A uh, revelation. Fox chaser, what the dickens is this? And the farm family's up after breakfast in bed. Tally ho, and we're off to chase this monster of the deep. We mean dry land. Get out of the way, we want to see the plowing. And harvest. How many hired hands do you suppose they've got? Now, this must be a horse show. Hurdle jumpers. Yes, hurdle jumpers. Look at that thing cutting wheat. And nothing can stop them. Drill and seed right in amongst the shocks. Come on with the horses. Riding horseback beats walking through the stubble barefooted. 
and this what you will call it. And more surprise, cream separator. You remember how Andy used to churn? And corn sheller, will wonders ever cease? Don't get that horse blanket skirt caught in a cog wheel and pull a strip tease on us. And feed grinder, what do you know about that? And look at the feed belching out of that spout. And she's all run by electricity, enough juice for Coney Island. Looking at that switchboard and electric, you demand. Romance, ah, romance. And this modern farm is equipped for everything. George, you act a little short on vitamins. Oh, they didn't have vitamins in 1911. Turn the oomph on to him, Molly. Is that the best you can do? Thank goodness it's settled. This just leaves me weak. You can't get in there, you horse thief. Love finds a way, an idea. Say, Asbury, let me have that speed, uh, what you might call it. There's some unfinished business. Come on, Molly. And you can climb in, too, since you're going to get married. Look out, don't throw her in reverse and they'll circle the globe by break of day. Then came the dawn, and what's the dog catcher after? Oh, our mistake. That must be a special delivery. Bad news? Did Mike break his leg, or is there a mortgage on the place? Come here, Ma. Dear Uncle Jim, you said the auto wagon, oh, that's what it was, was good for anything. It is. It's good for midnight elopements. I'm strong for the old farm in Molly. See you soon, George. Well, what are we going to do about it? Well, you remember how we did it, Ma? And that's all of the picture. And that was a snappy ending in 1911. What do you think about it? As an industry murderously overloaded its teams by 1934,